In this game art breakdown video, we'll go through the steps we took in setting up the Origami Ninja Ninja Duel Turnaround. Since these models were already created, we won't go into the step by step modeling process. Instead, we'll go through how we went about setting up the scene using Maya and Marmoset. And we'll also go over some of the tips and tricks we use when creating 3D models and art assets for games. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to separate these and we're going to create a high poly so we can use that to bake down the high poly mesh for our texture. So we're going to first separate these pieces out. So normally if we were using this in our game, instead of having these huge large chunks of our model, uh, we'd separate these pieces out into individual pieces. For example, we'd go in on, on this clothing area and we'd separate all these pieces out individually so we don't have any information from one asset being baked onto another asset. For this, since it's just essentially for this turntable, we just combine all these together and we just bake these as one. But in normal circumstances and best practices, it's best to essentially explode your model and bake each of these pieces out individually, opposed to baking them right on top of each other. If we go to three, a smooth view that we're losing a lot of these, these pieces where it should be fairly sharp. So we're just going to add edges and we'll reinforce those edges with edge loops. And one of the things that we like to do when we're creating a essentially a high poly version is we'll kind of add those bevels in areas that uh, we want the bevels to be so we don't get those kind of hard creases. We get a very kind of smooth, uh, really good looking normal map. So we'll do this for all of our objects, jumping back and forth to using our smooth view just to see how how our objects are going to appear once we smooth them out. So for this model in particular, we're keeping a lot of these harder edges, even those found within the cloth, because we kind of want to maintain our stylized look that we have. So while normally in areas such as cloth, we would go for a more softer look. For this instance, we're maintaining that harder look that we have to maintain the stylized approach that we set within this character universe. And we'll do this for the remainder of our model. So at this point, we finished creating our edge loops across our model. We can go, go to our smooth view and we can see that we have now have all the areas that we want to be creased are we still maintain that smooth view and for our hair as well and adding just a few more little details to accent different areas within our character as well so once we we're, we're happy with that how that appears we can then go and we can smooth out our character in our models we can grab these increase our divisions and then we can then select these and go and we can export these out as an FBX. We will also do the same for our low poly and we will grab those and we're going to export these as selected as the FBX as well. Next, we use the rig character and Maya's time editor to find a pose within our animation that we're happy with. So we began with our fully rig character. So instead of moving the character into our pose that we wanted, we use the animation editor to import our animation that we use directly in the game uh, into Maya. And we can see now that we have the animations imported into our character. So we're just gonna find a, uh, a good action pose. And the thing that we're looking for on this one, we're looking for a good silhouette of our character. So since we know we're going to be turning that around, we want a good silhouette of the character. So we went to our unlit view and we selected a, uh, a good action pose that's going to have a good silhouette and be able to transfer over. So once we did this one, since we know we're not going to be using our animations and we didn't want that to move, we went to our outliner, we grabbed all our geometry and we deleted all our history. And we can see from this point, 
we no longer have the any animations coming into our character. At this point, we can delete our animation clip and our bones. Now that we have a pose that we're happy with, we're going to import our sword into our scene. Next, we're going to grab all our game objects and we're going to group these guys together. From this point, we're going to import our rigged ninja model. So for this model, instead of using our time editor to find the animation, we just simply pose this character. So once we have a pose that we're happy with, we selected all our, our geometry for our ninja character and we deleted our history. From that point, we deleted our bones and then we grabbed our ninja character and we separated our polygons. Grab the top half of the ninja character and combine that back together. Then we selected the bottom pieces of the ninja character and combine those back. And from that, we put our top on a layer as well as the bottom piece on a layer as well. Then we use the bottom piece of a cylinder to fill in the hole left by separating the two meshes. From there, we duplicated the hole and then we moved it to the top part of the body as well. So from this point, we just grab the character and we pose our second character. Next, we added in a blood stroke slash. To do this, we simply used a polygon cylinder. Now for our blood, what we use is simply ink splats and ink strokes. And from that point, once we gathered the textures that we wanted, place them in a, a texture sheet, we just inverted our color to a very gray, light gray. This way it allows us to change the color based on a material. So once we got that set, we saved that out and went back into Maya to our UV editor. We're gonna duplicate the stroke, grab our vertexes, soft select. Next, we're gonna get a polygon plane Go back into our UV editor. We're gonna use this as our blood splatter. And we're also gonna throw one behind the character where the sword is. So before we go to Marmoset, the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a ground plane. So we're gonna use that just by using a polygon, make it fairly large. And we're just gonna increase our polygon so that it looks pretty smooth and then just delete these faces that are at the bottom. It's gonna create a new material and we're gonna go to our UV editor and just lay that out so it's taking that whole UV area. And with all our meshes complete, we're just gonna grab all these guys, let's freeze our transfers, delete our history to make sure that's set at zero and we're gonna export these out and continue in Marmoset. But the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna bake out our character. And something that we do fairly often, rather than baking out in substance, is we'll bake out in Marmoset because Marmoset is a little bit better, we feel, with harder edges. One of the first things that we're gonna do if we wanna bake in Marmoset is we're gonna go to our bread loaf icon and we're gonna click that and that's gonna give us a baking group. So once we have our baking group in our scene, we can bring in our high and low poly objects by clicking file, import model, or we can just simply drag and drop them within our scene. So we're gonna move our high poly under our high poly group and we're gonna move our low under our low poly group. And if we click low, Marmoset will give us a cage showing us where it's gonna get that information from our model. So this is a real good indicator that allows you to see which parts of your model are being baked. So for areas, if we go to zero, we can see that we have areas such as this that shows our essentially a high poly and it's not gonna get that information. So we can just go and we can increase this, the size just a bit. We're gonna increase it to where it is just right over our polygon object and it's not having that much show through. 
We can also adjust the opacity of our cage so we can clearly see the model under it when it's coming through. So it just gives us a better visual representation of what's being affected by our bake. So we also have a minimum offset and a maximum offset as well. If we go into our overarching bake group, we can see our output, which allows us to choose the samples, what kind of maps that it's going to be baking, the format, the location, softness of the edges. If we want to have multiple layers, our padding, as well as our resolution and this multiple texture set, which essentially is going to get all of the materials set on that, on that game object and allow us to bake all those at once. So if we go into our maps, we can see that we have uh, different types of maps that we can bake out normal height curvature position. Clicking on configure will show us the list of different maps that we can bake out anything from our lighting information to our color IDs, um, as well as our material information. If we have any on that object as well. So we're going to go to a probably 0 0.4, 0 0.5 softness a 16 for our samples and a 16 channel bit rate. So once we have all that, all of our settings in there selected, we're going to go and we're going to go to bake. And from this point, we'll see the pop-up, which is Marmoset telling us which maps it is baking, how long they're going to take. So with our bake complete, we can now import the character scene that we exported. So we're just going to drag and drop that into our scene. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and find the maps that we baked out and we're going to import them into our material. Now, if your material shares the same name, it will actually automatically import. The maps will automatically be added once you import that model into your scene. Next, we want to bring in the textures on the materials for all the objects in our scene. And we also want to make sure that we grab our blood spatter and we're going to go into the properties and we're going to turn off back face culling. The sensor is making that double sided and we're just going to do this for all of our blood meshes and just turn off that back face culling so we can see that from both sides. Next, we'll add our ground texture images to our material. Next, we're going to import our grass model into our scene. And we're going to duplicate this grass and we're going to spread it throughout our scene. Kind of rotating that as we go along. So with all our models and materials in place, we're going to go and we're going to start adjusting our lighting for our scene. So now we're going to move to our camera and our post processing effects that we use to create the scene. And let's go to our render. So we're going to enable or enable global illumination, increase our occlusion detail and adjust our brightness for global illumination. So we get some of that. We get a lot of that red reflecting around in the scene. Now let's go to our camera settings and we're going to adjust our lens and add a depth of field. So once we get all that set, we're just going to create a new turntable and we're going to drag all of our models onto our new turntable. 